Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to a very special video on a very special Hornby model. Now, as you can see, I have an A4 Mallard here, and while Hornby have made plenty of these over the years, this one is a bit different because it's a live steam locomotive. Now, if you don't know what live steam is, well, normally our models use a motor powered by electricity to move, but with live steam locos, the engine actually moves using steam power. This is a working steam locomotive, and usually they're seen more in the larger scales, but way back in 2003, Hornby had this crazy idea to try and create a double O gauge live steam loco, and I am lucky enough to own one. This isn't going to be a standard review video since we're really just going to be attempting to run this loco. So first of all, I'll show you how to steam it up and run it on the rolling road, and then later on we'll get it running around a circular track with some coaches. Before we steam up, I need to add water to the tank first, which is in the tender. And if I lift up the molded coal piece, you can see it here. I'll unscrew this plug, and as you can see, that gives me access to add the water. The opening is quite small, so the best way to do this is using a syringe. The loco takes two full syringes and then a little bit more as well, which is usually enough to steam it for half an hour. It's also best to use distilled water with live steam engines so that you don't get lime scale or anything else building up inside of it either. With the water in the tank, I'll put the plug back in and screw it down. Then it's on to oiling the loco, which is just as easy. This time I'll remove the funnel, which just pops off, and underneath there's another screw to take out. You only need to use a tiny amount of oil, so again using a syringe, I'll just add a little bit here, and then when the loco is in motion, that will gradually get pushed around the whole mechanism. With that done, I replace the screw and the funnel, and then it's time to steam up the loco. Now here's the controller for the live steam locos, and as you can see, it's quite a bit different from the controllers we're used to using. On the right we have a large transformer, and then on the left is the actual control panel itself. At the top we have this wheel which controls the superheater, which in turn controls how much we heat the water. While we're steaming up, I'll set this to full so that we can build up the pressure quickly. This little dial has now sprung to life, and that's showing us that we now have 15 volts going to the track. The Hornby live steam engines work by running electricity through the track to power the superheater, which heats up the water, but as you can see it requires 15 volts to do this. Because of that, and also how the controller sends signals to the loco, you can't have any of your other engines on the layout at the same time, as they're not compatible with live steam. Lastly, on the controller we have this lever which is sprung in both directions, and this is what we'll use to control the loco's movement later on. Mallard is now steaming up, but before it's ready to roll, let's just take a closer look at the loco. As you can see, it's in the garter blue livery, an obvious choice really, and it's very well done. One thing you will notice though if you look closely is that there is quite a lot of dust that gets picked up by the oil and the steam that comes out of this loco. I do try to clean it after every running session, but it's difficult to remove all of the oil and it's not helped by the fact that we're looking at this really close up. We also have a nameplate on the front of the loco and this isn't just printed on, it's actually a separately fitted part which is really nice too. Other printing on the loco is good too, we have the LNER lettering on the tender and Mallard's number 4468 on the side of the cab, as well as a builder's plate just below it. The number is also repeated on the front of the Loco 2, along with the A4 classification. As for cab detail, well, there isn't really any. Uh, we have lots of pipes and wiring running between the tender and the Loco instead. I think that can be forgiven though, as no one really gets a live steam loco specifically because they want an incredibly detailed model. It's more the novelty of having a working steam engine in double O gauge, and in order for Mallard to work, it's kind of important that those wires are there. So the engine is now ready to go. As you can see, the safety valve is blowing off every so often, which means that we've built up enough pressure, so let's get it moving. The engine is currently set in reverse, so I'll hold the control lever in the opposite direction and we should hear a whistle as the gears switch. And there we go. Once the whistle stopped, I released the lever and now the loco is set to run forward. Driving these engines can be a bit tricky and no two are alike, but it's generally considered that the driving instructions that come with the model are pretty awful and are best ignored. So I've very much learned how to drive mine by watching others online and in person who are much more skilled than me. I'll just start by clicking the lever in the forwards directions a few times. Usually it takes five clicks before anything happens and this just takes up the slack in the mechanism. And we should see it start to move any time now. And yep, there it goes. And I mean, Isn't it just fantastic? Obviously it doesn't really do a crawl, but remember it's on the rolling road at the moment so it has very little resistance. 
In my experience, these live steam locos tend to run a bit better when they have a few carriages behind them, but don't worry, you'll get to see that later on in the video. As we've got a good amount of pressure, I'll turn the heater down now, as we don't need the water to be heated up quite so fast. As you can see, it's a nice smooth runner, even as I start to pick up the pace now. A lot of locos tend to wobble a bit when they're on the rolling road, but actually Mallard is really stable. You can also just start to see some steam coming out of the funnel now. It's not consistent or thick like from a smoke generator, but remember this is a working steam engine, so it'll only release steam when it needs to. The best thing though, and unfortunately it's the one thing that doesn't translate on video, is the smell. This smells well, like a steam engine, really. I mean, it's great. You'll have to take my word for it, though, since no one has invented smell vision yet. I'll just start to slow it down now by flicking the regulator in the reverse direction. Again, it takes a few clicks before we see anything start to happen, which is why you really need to be on the ball when running these on a layout. Gradually, though, we can see the loco start to slow down until eventually it comes to a halt. We'll run it in reverse briefly too, so I'll change the direction again. And then start flicking the regulator to get it to run in the opposite direction. As you can see, Mallard runs just as well in reverse, although I'm not sure why you'd ever want to do that, to be honest. In my experience, these locos don't really do fine controlled movements, so you won't be backing down onto coaches and shunting is pretty much out of the question. For the most part, it's best to consider this as an extremely advanced train set loco. The more complicated you try and make things, the more likely you are to have an issue, so it's best enjoyed when it's just running around in a big circle, to be honest. And with that said, it's time to do just that. As I start to slow the loco down, it's running out of steam now, so we'll let it cool down for a bit while I set up some track, and then we'll fire it up again to have it pull some coaches for us. Okay, I'm back, and as you can see, Mallard is now stood on a circuit of track with a good rake of Hornby's LNER Teak coaches behind her. Just a minute ago, I topped up the water so she's ready to go, so let's get the superheater on. Now, in the past when I've wanted to do continuous runs with Locos, I've set up a circuit on the table, but with Mallard I wanted to have a bit more space to run her, so she's on the floor today. Also, if we do have any accidents and Mallard comes off the track, at least this way it'll just fall over onto the floor instead of going off the edge of the table and smashing on the ground. Obviously, though, you're not supposed to run Locos on the carpet, so I've tried to avoid that as best as I can by putting the track down onto cardboard. It's a bit bumpy in a few places, but I think that's better than having it directly on the carpet. And so I think Mallard is just about ready to go, so let's just start flicking the regulator and see if she'll start to move. You can also see that I've got some heat resistant gloves on now as well, just in case there are any issues and I need to hold the loco as obviously it's really hot. And now that she's got the weight of the coaches behind her as well, it'll need a bit more power before she starts to move. And there she goes, uh, quite a fast start and as you can see I just flicked the regulator in the opposite direction to slow her down a bit as we don't want her running away too quickly. But here it comes now, and doesn't she look great, especially with those coaches behind her? It's quite a smooth runner actually, and it's just really nice to have it going round at a controlled speed like this. Although this part of the room does slope downwards slightly, so it speeds up a bit while going through the station. But really, considering it spent a lot of time sat in its box, it's just great to have it running around so well like this. I'd say it's actually performing much better now than it did when it was brand new, and a certain amount of that is because of running in. You're supposed to run all locos in, but especially with live steam locos, they really need to run in properly. So I first fell in love with the Live Steam Locos when Hornby first announced them back in 2003. I was still a kid back then, or maybe just a teenager, but I never seriously thought I would ever own one of these Locos. It was a nice dream, but way out of my reach, until one Christmas where my parents and my grandparents all clubbed together for both Christmas and my birthday, probably for several years, and they got me one of these engines, and I can honestly say it was one of the biggest surprises of my life. I still can't quite believe I actually own one. 
That said, because I didn't have a proper layout to run it on at that point, and because I was just a kid, I wasn't particularly good at driving it. As I've already mentioned, they're not particularly easy to drive, but then a couple of years ago, I went to the Model Railway exhibition at Alexandra Palace, and here's some footage that I shot back then, which is actually in the first video I ever released on this channel. So the Double O Live Steam Club were there, along with their test track, and basically they focus entirely on these engines and helping people to learn more about them. As you can see, they were running steam engines all day long, so I spent a good amount of time hanging around and just watching the engines being driven and picking up tips. I've got a lot better at it since then, and as you can see, Mallard is still running around really quite happily now. Again, I can't tell you how good the smell is too. It sounds like a weird thing to say, but it really does just smell like a small steam loco. Speaking of steam, you can see a bit more of it coming out of the funnel now too, which is really nice. But yeah, it's easiest to see it when it's against the dark background, but when you can see it, it does look great. I have to admit, this loco was actually one of the reasons that I started building my modular railway too. Originally I was going to have an end-to-end -end type layout, but I realised that in order to run this loco I really needed to have a continuous circuit. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to getting this on my main layout when it's finished. I imagine I'll end up getting smoke and oil all over it, but I guess we can just say that it's very realistic track weathering. So there we go, that's one of the Hornby Live Steam engines in action. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, it's been a bit different, but if you haven't already, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications too. But that's all for this time guys, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye!